Ministers have been holding crisis talks aimed at limiting the damage caused by the collapse of the construction giant Carillion, which also provided services for schools, prisons and hospitals. Katie Rickett is in Greater Manchester at a school which was run by Carillion. So, Katie, how is the impact being felt there? Well, this school, like hundreds of others, Kate, relies on Carillion still for catering, caretaking and cleaning. But it counts itself very lucky because up until just last week, it was actually sponsored and managed by Carillion. Now, it has now created its own Academies Trust under a different name, as you can see, after the head teacher back in July saw the writing on the wall for Carillion with that first profit warning. Now, many are asking why, if she spotted what was to come, why the government didn't spot it as well. Not normally part of the day job, firefighters in Oxfordshire are on standby to deliver school dinners, a service that had been contracted out to Carillion. The council put these contingency plans in place six months ago after the company issued profit warnings. In that same period, the government awarded Carillion eight new contracts. You'll see that in pretty well every case, those were constructed as a joint venture so that uh, the other contractor was obliged to come forward and take up Carillion share if anything were to go wrong. Ministers say the priority is to protect the public services provided by Carillion, but an inquiry into the government's outsourcing practices has already begun. It's time to put an end to the rip-off privatisation policies that have done serious damage to our public services and fleece the public of billions of pounds. This is a watershed moment. All Carillion workers with public sector jobs will continue to be paid, but those working in the private sector only have their wages guaranteed until tomorrow. Meanwhile, MPs are calling for Carillion bosses to hand back bonuses totalling millions of pounds. Katie Rickett, Good Morning Britain.